A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I start in the name of Allah the Beneficent and the Merciful and I seek salvation from Shaitan the Accursed. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Abul Fadl al-Abbas. Salutations upon Imam al hussein and Abul Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. My dearest viewers, Assalamu alaikum jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, blessings and protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you at all times. Welcome to the first episode of our new show, The Ramadan Show, with me, your host, Dr. Shabir Tijani. Over the next 30 nights and 30 days, we'll be talking about the month of Ramadan and how you can get the best out of this month. We'll be talking about things such as spiritual refinement, philosophy, we'll talk about medical and health tips, we'll also have some poetry there, We'll be looking at how people around the world prepare for this holy month of Ramadan. And we'll also be having a very short speech from Sheikh Fayyad in order to help you to try and get the most out of this month. In fact, I would consider this probably a one-stop shop for you and all of your Ramadan needs, inshallah. You can also join in the show by using Twitter. If you use the hashtag IHTVRamadan, and you can join in our online debate. You can also have a look at the references that we use on a day-to-day -day basis during our shows on our Facebook page www.facebook.com forward slash Imam Hussein 3 TV. And finally, I would like to also inform you that inshallah these episodes will be going on to YouTube the night after the production of the show on the television station. I would like to kick off this show with an ayah from the Holy Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says only those who give from what they love can achieve righteousness and after all that is what we're here to try and achieve from the month of Ramadan by giving what we love we're trying to reach closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> During this segment of the show, inshallah, we'll be looking into specific traits that we can utilize in order not to only improve ourselves as human beings, but also to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, in this first episode, I want to just set the scene and provide an introduction into why we're specifically talking about these traits in this month. Sheikh Sudduq in Al-Amali narrates that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, gave a sermon at the beginning of every month of Ramadan in which he speaks about the holy month and talks about how this month is so special. This month has the highest station in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the holy prophet says that even breathing in this month is ibadah, sleeping in this month is equivalent to doing tasbih so one can only imagine the height and the level of this holy month. The Prophet talks about a lot of things in this sermon. However, a couple of things he particularly talks about is Silat al Rahim, which is keeping closeness with one's family and visiting the family, and also helping the needy and the poor. Now, we have to ask ourselves as human beings, we're brought up with intrinsic values of good and evil, of right and wrong. And we know that as human beings, it's our duty to try and help the poor and also to keep closeness with our family. So why is it that as human beings we don't do that? And the answer is simple. Unfortunately, during our lives, we sin and we acquire traits that are a disease to the soul. And as a result, they, they stop us from performing good acts. However, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam in Dua Makarim al Akhlaq talks about specific traits that we can employ that we can use in order to purify our souls and get rid of diseases of our souls such as ego and arrogance. The question is why 
do we get ego and arrogance? And the simple answer is that we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before we do anything, the first and most important thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at is one's near intention, sincerity. After all, shaitan was thrown out of heaven after approximately 6,000 years of good deeds because his near was not right, was impure. So how can we make sure that our near is constantly revitalized and refreshed? And the answer is simple, is that after performing every action, you must reassess yourselves because as human beings, you're not stagnant. Therefore, your intention should never be stagnant. You should be constantly evolving your intention with your own actions and your own surrounding environment as it ev evolves. Now, the intention should always be for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in order to gain closeness towards Allah and His Ahlul Bayt. So the question is, why are we specifically focusing on traits in the month of Ramadan? And why is it that we're looking at this holy month in order to help improve ourselves, not only as human beings, but also to gain the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the answer is actually quite simple because this is a month in which Allah promises that we will have elevation of our spirituality and our souls. It is also a month in which we try and kick out the bad habits and employ new habits, good habits, in order to improve ourselves so that after the month passes, we're better as human beings. Thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put specific emphasis on reassessing, contemplating, thinking about where you are in your life and where you want to get to, how you will get there. And he asks you to call upon him to help you to get to that place. And therefore we can use this month in order to contemplate and improve ourselves and employ these good habits after contemplating and reassessing our lives. I guess the most important quality of this month of Ramadan is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that he will rain his mercy down upon you. And if we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try and improve us, to help us improve, and to allow us to use these traits in our everyday life to become better human beings, then surely we can achieve that station. So this is the platform that we will use for the coming nights in order to try and really improve ourselves as human beings, in order to refine ourselves spiritually and to enrich ourselves in order to gain that closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his progeny has stated, Surely the month of Ramadan has been named so because it scorches away the sins. In this segment of the show, we'll talk a little bit about how people from all around the world prepare for the month of Ramadan. People from east to west all prepare in a specific way or a special way that is accustomed to the way that they live and the place that they live in. And I thought it would be brilliant to start off with the United Kingdom, which is the country that I'm from. In the United Kingdom, as many of you are aware, it's not a Muslim country, so our day-to-day -day lives don't change that much in terms of work. We still have work as a routine and the working hours are still the same. Children don't get time off from school. So it is really up to us to try and get the most out of the month, even though we still have to work and do our day-to-day -day activities as we normally do. The parents usually try to encourage their kids to attend school, but also after school when the evening programs start in the mosque, usually people get together and they have a majlis, there's dua, and usually there's an iftar as well after Maghrib Salah. And other than that, the parents really try to encourage their children to become part of all of the 
um, all, all of the spiritual upliftment. They try to get them involved with the majlis, try to get them to come to the a'mal as well on the uh, nights of Laylatul Qadr. And even though the fasts in the United Kingdom are long, so we usually have iftar between 9 and 10 o'clock at night, there is still a, a lot of children do get involved with the participation in the mosques and the a'mal as well. The parents also try to get the children excited for the event of Eid because for us in the United Kingdom, unlike in many of the Eastern countries where Islam is the primary religion, in the United Kingdom we don't have that uh, environment where many, many people around us are Muslim. So f for us, the event of Eid is actually a very special occasion, as I'm sure it is around many parts of the world, but the children really have to try and get enthusiastic about this. And so the parents make a big deal about it. They usually get their children nice clothes, prepare good food for the event of Eid, and get them into that mindset of something that is, some, it is something to look forward to. Now, obviously, because of the long fasting hours, those who work usually tend to try and adopt their day-to-day -day lives in order to fulfill their fast as well as attend work. And usually what happens is that the time of suhoor is maybe around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So they try to eat before going to sleep and then they wake up early in the morning for work. And as a result, by the time they get back from work, they're usually quite tired. So uh, usually they try to get some rest in the afternoon after they return from work, maybe have some sleep for a couple of hours and then they get prepared for the, the mosque or the um, Islamic center after, they, after, after they, they wake up and when it's time for Maghrib. Finally, in the United Kingdom, we don't have the, um, we d we don't have the environment like you guys do here in, in Karbala or in some of the Islamic countries around the world. So we really try to come together as a community because that is almost like our social network um, in, in our homes and in our, in, in our cities that we live in. And using that, we try to get as many people to the mosque as possible in order to join in the activities. And usually, as a result, um, there's a lot of brother, brotherhood and uh, we come together for iftar as well quite often. If that's not possible, usually families get together around the dinner table for iftar and they break bread together, they eat food together, and the children usually go to bed by then, but then most of the elders, they tend to stay up until um, until the time of Sahur because the hours are very, the, the, the hours of Maghrib to Fajr are very short, so they try to have Sahur before uh, uh, reciting Salat al Fajr and then going to bed. Uh, so that's really, in a nutshell, how we try to prepare for the month of Ramadan and for the days in Ramadan in order to make the most out of them, not only physically but also spiritually, in order to allow us, allow us to ascend. Uh, and get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to get our children involved because that is something that we really try and focus upon. Being in a country where Islam isn't the primary religion, we really try and get the children attached to the religion and, and, and as adults we try to lead by example. So that is essentially how we go about preparing our days in the month of Ramadan. We really would like all of you at home to get involved and really be a part of the show. So please Wherever you're from, please send us your videos so that we can air it on our TV show and it will be aired during this show so we can see how people from all over the world, from east to west, get involved in the month of Ramadan and how they prepare and how they go about their day-to-day -day lives during the month of Ramadan. The details where you can send the videos to are at the bottom of your screen and inshallah we look forward to those videos.
the name of Allah, the most precious, the most merciful. Dearest viewers of Imam Hussein TV, welcome. May all your prayers be accepted in this holy month. Today, we are in one of the stores in Karbala that produces and sells sweets, cookies, and cakes. So let's go inside and see the atmosphere of the holy month of Ramadan in this specific store of Karbala. In the holy month of Ramadan, we are all the guests of Allah. And one of the blessings of this month is the close relationship between the adorers, the believers, the family members, and friends. In this holy month, the hearts are very close to one another. Therefore, after iftar, we go and sit together, remember Allah and all the blessings that He gave us and through the guidance of Ahlul Bayt These gatherings are so sweet. Yet to add sweetness to these gatherings, you might serve your guests with sweets. And today we are in one of the stores in Karbala that sells and produces the best sweets in Karbala. اني حج محمد ابن حج عبد الامير ابن مرحوم حج كاظم الشكرش احنا تاريخنا بالحلويات ظهرا عن ظهر لو جيلا عن جيل بالسبب المعروفية اللي نعرف جدي او ابي والدي السبب اللي ارتباطهم مع مع امام الحسين سلام الله عليه بعدين هم البضاعة جيدة حاولين على بضاعتهم على جودتها على نظافتها على يعني ناحية النقاسة وطهارة هذا النه كله مهم كله مهم بالتاريخ من ألف وثمانمية وأربعة وثمانين ميلادي جدي أسس الحلويات في كربلاء. أجا من إيران وجاء الكربلاء للزيارة المهم تاريخ إله لما بقى هنا في في هنا وأسس الحلويات في المنطقة ومن ناحية الجودة من شهر شهر رمضان على المود اللي الناس صايمين بعد الحلاء هم يعني يزيد يزيد القوة البشر وقت اللي صائم يحتاج الحلاء ولذا الأجواء الحلويات هم تتغير تروح على الزدابية على بامية على بقلاوة على أشياء اللي حلاتها أكثر عموما شهر رمضان أوائلها هو أكثر يحتاجون الناس للحلاء لأن الصيام أكثر يأثر على الناس وبعدين شوية شوية يعني يتعودون على الصيام والحالات هم شوية تقل إلى نص رمضان زين يعني حلا شراهم هواي وبعدين هم شوية شوية تقل لما إلى عيد الفطر بعد الناس هم على مود العيد يجون يشترون هم يتغير يصير على أجواء الأخرى Imam Hussein TV viewers, thanks for being with us 
in this short episode. Hope you like it. And we pray for you that may Allah accept all your prayers and supplications during the holy month of Ramadan and stay tuned for more to come. In this segment of the show, inshallah, I'll be talking about medically related health tips in order to allow you to get the most out of this month in a physical way. And also, inshallah, I hope I'll give you tips that will also benefit you every day for the rest of your lives. In this episode, which is the first episode of this month, I want to specifically talk about the benefits of fasting on the human body and also specific health tips or specific things you can do in this month in order to allow you to get the most out of this month in a physical sense. Many years ago, scientists thought that fasting was actually bad for the human body. I mean, after all, how can a human body that's deprived of food and water be a good thing? But recently, studies in the United States of America and the Great Britain have shown that actually fasting can actually be of benefit to the human body. And you may ask how? Studies have shown recently that fasting actually can help you to lower your blood sugar levels and also allow you to lower your cholesterol levels. Inshallah, in future episodes, I'll be talking more about diabetes and cholesterol and also about heart disease and strokes. But these are specific risk factors, diabetes and cholesterol, the high cholesterol for heart disease and for strokes. So inshallah, if you fast and you make the most of this month and fast in the correct way, you can actually lower your blood sugar levels and your cholesterol and therefore help you to maintain a healthy lifestyle. The other thing that scientists have found that is beneficial from fasting is that a specific hormone that's re released in the body called IGF-1, the proper name for it is insulin-like growth factor 1, is actually produced less in the body during the month or during f periods of fasting and IGF-1 is actually shown to age people. So this hormone in low quantities actually helps you to stay younger. And finally, the other benefit that I've found of fasting on the human body is addiction. I mean, we often see people around who have specific addictions. Some are addicted to cigarettes, for example, and they smoke. Other people have more subtle addictions. So addictions to things like coffee and caffeine or addictions to sugar and sweet things. All of these, in moderation, can be a good thing for the human body or can help the human body. Um, but in excess, and when you're actually dependent on the, those things physically and psychologically, that can actually be a bad thing for the human body. So fasting actually prevents you from getting into that day-to-day -day routine where you need those things, where you're craving those things. And going to a cyclical day-to-day -day motion and a routine in which you're deprived of these specific things can actually benefit you and will actually allow you inshallah to kick the habit whatever your addiction is whatever the bad habit is next i just want to talk a little bit about specific things you can do during the month of ramadan in order to make the most out of the month from a physical point of view so that you're not remaining exhausted the whole day so that you're not tired all the time and that is a couple of things. Firstly, it's your routine. And secondly, it's your eating habits. Obviously, we have very few hours during the day in which we can eat. Obviously, it depends from country to country and where you are in the world. But during those short few hours in which you can eat, it's very important to eat the right things and to eat them at the right times. Now, as we know, the human body was not designed to be starved all day and all night. However, science, scientists have found that actually the human body can be starved of food for prolonged periods of time. So we're talking days and weeks before the human body actually gives up. 
So we know from science that actually the human body can survive prolonged periods of time without food. The main thing that the human body needs is actually water and hydration. So it's very, very important that when you break your fast that you actually drink plenty of water. And from the hadith we, we find that the Holy Prophet used to eat dates when he opened his fast and have water. Now, as I've said before, that water is very important for the human body, but dates are a very high source of nutrients. They provide you with sugars, because after a long day fasting, your sugar levels drop. And also, uh, we're told to have salt when we break our fast. And the reason why salt is so beneficial for the human body after a prolonged period of fasting is that as you sweat, you lose salt through your sweat. And if you haven't had anything to eat for prolonged periods of time, you don't replace that salt. So it's very important for you to open your fast with some salt. Now, what's the right things to eat? when you're actually having your iftar. And that depends from person to person, what uh, your body makeup is like. So if you're someone who is um, very, very thin, it, you're, the right thing for you to eat will be different to someone who is actually uh, fairly overweight. But in order to make sure that you have a, a good energy source throughout the day, it is important to try and eat something that we call complex carbohydrates. So this can be things like rice, it can be things like pasta. And all of these things will allow you to uh, have access to energy stores throughout the duration of the day and even the next day. And it will allow you to not feel so tired and exhausted all the time. And as I mentioned, if you drink plenty of water during the iftar, it will allow your body to rehydrate itself and replenish itself because deprivation of water for prolonged periods of time isn't good for the body because it lowers the circulating blood volume and lowers the circulation to very, very important organs such as the heart, the kidneys, the brain and as a result it can lower your blood pressure. So it's very, very important that you do drink plenty of water through the day. And finally, very, very important to stay away from very oily foods and fried foods because for two reasons. Firstly, at iftar time when you're opening your fast it tends to be quite late at night, so you tend to sleep quite soon afterwards. And having oily food before sleep is not a good idea because it just sits in your stomach and sits in your gut for prolonged periods of time and actually isn't very healthy for you. And secondly, obviously, when that happens, you feel very bloated. Specific uh, enzymes are released in your body and they're designed to break down the fats and the oils. And if you have too much oils, it can actually make you feel very, very bloated and unwell. So it's very important to try and stay away from oily foods. And finally, try not to overeat. I know it's a difficult thing to say because you've been fasting and starving the whole day. But at iftar time, try to eat in moderation. Drink plenty of water. And inshallah, eat regularly, but smaller amounts. And finally, it's very, very important to make use of the suhoor because at that time, your body is just about to go into the fasting period. So load your body up with nutrients to allow you to go through the next day and to allow you to make the most of that day so that you're not all exhausted and tired all the time. And inshallah, as a result, you will be able to do good acts and good deeds in order to also help you spiritually. In a very well-known sermon delivered by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, in the last Friday sermon of Shaban, he emphasized, O people, the month of Allah has come towards you, bringing divine blessings, mercy, and forgiveness. The subtle point in this phrase is the fact that these three divine offerings are not granted to the people at the month, at the beginning of the month, but rather there are special gifts of the month of Ramadan from the very, from the very first day it begins. The Holy Prophet continued, In this month in which you have been invited to the banquet of Allah the Almighty, according to the wording of the, of the above phrase, people are invited into the, to this banquet. Therefore, in order for one to enter such a blessed banquet, he or she must accept the invitation and act upon it. Generally speaking, some may understand the word banquet as a requirement of eating, drinking, or some sort of entertainment. However, the banquet, the banquet of Allah is essentially different. 
Fasting is a condition for one in order to receive the special gifts granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, uh, in this blessed banquet. For grasping the character of divine banquet, we should first note that every banquet consists of four elements, four essential elements. Number one, when you are invited, you cannot be rejected. Thus, the host is expected to welcome the guests. Otherwise, an invitation is meaningless when the invitee is denied of reception. Accordingly, when Allah the Almighty invites His guests and His servants to the banquet of Ramadan, the gates of His mercy will be open to those who accept the invitation and of course act upon it. The second essential element is that when you enter the venue of the banquet, you will be treated with honor and respect, although every person who has, been, who has not been let in is, not competent, is competent of being respected. The same is not true. One may understand this fact that the following statement means in this month you are made of those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highly honors and respects. The third essential element is that when you go into a banquet you will be, you will be given or shown something without payment. In other words, you, accept, you expect to gain something without, in, without any return. Correspondingly, the banquet of Ramadan the banquet of Ramadan, Allah the Almighty not only rewards our actions generously, but He entertains His guests with various bounties without them doing something. So much so that He counts the sleep of the fasting individuals as worship and their breaths as an act of glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu states in the same sermon that your breaths in the month of Ramadan are glorification of Allah and your sleep in it is worship. We move on to the fourth essential element, is that when you are invited to a party, you naturally expect to meet the host and consider his absence as humiliation. Accordingly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites his servants to his banquets, he is already there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in every time and is everywhere. However, what is different about the month of Ramadan is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds to this banquet, His mercy, His forgiveness and blessings. This is the month in which you have been invited to the banquet of Allah the Almighty. This part of the sermon inspires the fact that this blessings has been dedicated to the month of Ramadan. The Holy Prophet adds, In the sight of Allah, this month is the best month. Its days are the best days, its nights are the best nights, and its hours are the holiest hours. We can conclude that although this month's prominence over the other months across the year, we see that its days, nights, and hours are the holiest hours and the best hours. By mentioning these three phrases independently, the Prophet emphasized that every portion of this month is better and more holier than any month across the year. For this first episode, the poem that I want to recite is one that's extremely close to my heart. It's a poem that was written by, well, it's, it's originally in three languages. It's in Arabic, English and Urdu, but I'll be reciting the Urdu and the English components of it. And it is a, a nasheed, which is a supplication, an intimate supplication from a servant to his master, from a servant. To, the, to his Lord, to the Almighty. And this poem has been written, the Urdu and the English parts have been written by myself and my brother Abbas. And it is a poem that is extremely close to our hearts. My heart is full of dishonor and shame. I have turned away again and again. Committing mistakes with nothing to gain Yet I have the cheek To sit and complain Because of my wrongs my soul has been burnt The chances you gave but I never learned When I am alone with no 
know where to turn. I find solitude. To you I return. Ya Rahimu, Ya Kareem, Ya Muqimu, Ya Azim, Ya Alimu, Ya Halimu, Ya Hakim. Ya Rab, Nahi hai misal maula teri. Teri rehmaton se humko mili Ye dono jahan sitare sabhi Ye shamsu qamar Ki sab roshni Tujhe dhundti hai meri nigah Nahi mera ko Ye tere siwa aayi Tu hi zindagi ka hai asra Mein deta rahu Ka har dam sada Ya rahimu, ya kareem, ya muqimu, ya azim Ya alimu, ya halimu, ya hakeem Ya rab Enjoying our lives whilst we are at rest. We are not aware the poor are oppressed. They are crying out in a voice so suppressed. They are vulnerable. Their rights are suppressed. With all of my heart, I pray for that day. When orphans will smile, there will be no pain. There will be an end to all tyrant reigns. A world in which love and peace will prevail. Ya Rahimu, Ya Kareem, Ya Muqimu, Ya Azim, Ya Alimu, Ya Halimu, Ya Hakim. Ya Rab, Meri har dua Me de wo asal Guzarish karu Me qatra agar Duao ka de Maula samar Sab haj to Ka bas tu hi dar Tu hai meri jaan Tu hai mehrbaan تو ایمان میرا ہے رب جہاں یہ سب التجا یہ سارے دعا سن لے حبیب میرے خدا یا رحیم و یا کریم یا مقیم و یا عظیم یا علیم و يا حليم يا حكيم يا رب يا رب يا The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his progeny, has stated, Surely the month of Ramadan has been named so because it scorches away the sins. As we conclude this first episode in our Ramadan series, I want to leave you with these final thoughts, these final words in order to get you to think about your philosophy and about how you'll approach this month of Ramadan. I want you to think about the opportunities that you will get during this month and about how you'll utilize these opportunities because 
by God, every opportunity you get is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want you to think of opportunity like water and time like your hands. If you don't utilize your hands wisely, if you don't utilize time wisely and you're too stretched and your hands are too stretched, then the water runs through your hands and the opportunity slips through your fingers. And therefore, whenever you get the opportunity to do something good in this month, whether it's giving charity or helping someone, make use of that opportunity because who knows, you may never get that opportunity again. You can discuss about this topic and your philosophy behind this thought on our Twitter page and using our Twitter handle, hashtag IHTV Ramadan. Please join us on our other social networking sites as well, on Facebook and on YouTube as well, where this episode will be uploaded tomorrow. Please also join us tomorrow for the next episode. And finally, I ask you to remember us in your du'as and also to remember the most important of all du'as and that is to hasten the appearance, rather the reappearance of the awaited Imam, Imam al-Mahdi ajjalallahu ta'ala faraja. And inshallah, I will see you again tomorrow and hopefully we'll be able to inspire you and prepare you for the month ahead. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm.